Guys, this is heavy, man. And this is what they wear on their necks. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, true. Yeah. Yes. When I was young, guys, the stories about how foreign ships used to come down to the coast of Nigeria and take a lot of us away as slaves, like in millions, to go and work for them overseas under very inhumane conditions. Off the coast of Lagos is a place called Badagri, and this place holds a significant history in the slave trade era. So I want you guys to come along with me and uh, let's see what happens in Badagri. I have long legs. Badagri is a place where many slaves were kept and it's also a place that tells the story of how the slave trade started. It was one of the major routes for the transatlantic slave trade. I don't really know a lot about the slave trade so I decided to go down here and meet up with somebody whose grandparents were alive during the era of the slave trade to tell me the story about how slave trade started in Nigeria. How far now? How are you doing? I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Tire, yeah. right? Yeah, tire. The compound that we are is known as Brazilian Barracoon. And Barracoon is a Portuguese word, meaning slave cell or storehouse where the slave we have been stored. And the compound right now, we have to turn about 40 rooms in this compound. Okay, so this is where they kept slaves? Yes, in the olden days. And that is say each room contains 40, 40 slaves. So this is called cowrie shell, as you can see. Okay. So those are the kind of currency our forefathers used then. Yeah, this is what they yeah. used to use yes. as but, a means of exchange. Yeah, but when they came, them say they can do business with our forefathers with this kind of money. Mm -hmm. Right on the wall, these were some of the European products that were used in a chain for the slave when they arrived. Like if the European give you one umbrella, yeah. you give them 40 human beings as a slave. Okay. Is this one of the rooms that yeah, this is 40 people? Room. Yes, yeah. 40 people? 40, yeah. 40, Inside 40, here? Yeah, and we have 40 rooms in the compound. Wow. This one is called Covlin Yoke. They use it to join two slaves together, the police are the ankle or the Okay, to join two slaves yeah, together by the leg. Slaves. Now, look at that small window tile. Can you see that small window there? Yeah. And that's what we provided the ventilation. Imagine 40 able human beings in there for three to four months. This 40 human beings inside here. Imagine the odor, the heat. Imagine how many human beings because they will have died here. That's the reason why people come here today. You are not here to cash from, but you have to feel the pain. The people of the past are fed, and those are the items that I show you on the wall. Each go for 10 10 slaves. These are 50 human beings. Look at your back there. This bottle, if you look closely at the body, you see it in 73. Be customized on the body. Yeah, That's 10 so human beings standing. So, guys, can you imagine the conditions that the slaves had to live in? 40 people in a room, a room that is not even enough for one person. 40 people had to stay inside that room. I can't even begin to imagine how most of them would have felt. So these are the cannon. Okay. 100, 100, that's 200 slaves. For this yeah. cannon, yeah. You can't give you the long one, you give them 100 human beings, another 100. That's wow. Cool. These are the chains they use for the slaves. Yeah, see, that's why I say you can see how oh. wish. Are you Should I put it? it? Yeah, yeah, let yeah. me try it. Okay. So just tell the people how you feel. Wow, this is heavy, man. Fuck. This is heavy. Ouch. He's even drawing my neck. Have you? <laughs> Guys, this is heavy, man. And this is what they wear on their neck, yeah, yeah, all yeah. true. Yes, there will be, it should be in a single file, yeah. you know, in a straight row. This is another neck, another neck. It could have been like 100 of wow, them. Wow, man, guys, this is very heavy. And they wear this all day, every time. Yeah, while they're taking it away. And it's even, this thing at the back is so not comfortable. Yeah. And that's their drinking pot here. Oh, this is where they drink and from. They don't allow them to use cup, but they almost they tie the hand at the back, they drink water this way. Wow. So everybody imagine, so everybody goes. Yeah, in. Imagine why the water gets below. Mm -hmm. Why struggling the air can see injure the slave. Wow. Yeah, so. Just putting the chain on my neck, those chains were so heavy and it was hurting my neck as you can see in the video. And these people had to go through all of this and they had no choice. Separated from their family, separated from everybody that they knew and sold. As you can imagine how these people were treated. So now we're going to the point of no return and for us to do that we have to cross over this lagoon here and get to the other side. That's where we see the point of no return. Point of no return is a point where once slaves get to, they can't come back anymore. You know, Badagri was founded around 1425. Okay. By a man called Agbede. 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 Okay. Yeah. And Agbede means blacks meat in Yoruba. The slave ship, which is called cargo ship, okay. will be awaiting the slave. On the other side. On the other side of the That's beach. at the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. They will come in, get to the town, 
get the, the number of slaves that they want. Okay. After getting the slaves, they will now walk them in a single file. Down to the beach? Beach. They'll be in a straight troll. Wow. And that heavy chain will be on their necks. You know most times when they talk about the slave trade, okay. it's always looking like, okay, it's just only the Europeans that were selling slaves. But it kind of seems like we Nigerians were also selling ourselves as slaves. Very, very correct. Like me, that I'm standing with you. Yeah. My forefathers, we are not slave traders, but we own slaves. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. Okay. You understand? How do we own our slaves? If you have the money then, yeah. you can move down to the market yeah. and buy your slaves. Okay. In the market, you buy slaves. Wow. So they used to sell slaves like, 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 like food? Something like, like going that. to Mr. Big. You see, this is what really happened. See, it's of two sides of it. Okay. In some part of Congo, even part of Nigeria, yeah. there are some places that they invaded. Okay. And they took the people away forcefully as a slave. Okay. But in some part of it, there's some part where by the Africans, locals, or the chiefs, the warrior, they are also their facilitator. They sell their own people. Because when they came, okay, they, uh, you know, we fought war then. Okay. You know, man want to you want to dominate your domain, your kingdom. Okay. You understand? That ego is within us. Yeah. You yeah. So, like now, if your village and my village had a fight, yeah. eventually, if you want the fight, you take you take the people away. As a slave to your own town. To your own town, and just like yeah. Walking, yeah, you understand. Yeah. Just and like they do in war. And war, and, uh, yeah. the victim of war, you understand. Yeah. yeah. So they will be working for you. Yeah. But when the European came, they made the trade on ground. Oh, they made the slave trade. So and the slave yes, trade was already happening, happening when they before came. Before they arrived here. Yeah. Wow. So they made the trade on ground. Okay. We been enslaving ourselves before they arrive. Africa. We betrayed ourselves. Hmm. Which is still happening up to today. Up to today, yeah. That's hey, that's the, that's different. where I'm going so, to with this, yeah. So if you check record, go and check record or quote me. Yeah. Most of the slave facilitators, their children, children were the ones still ruling in Africa up to today. Hmm. Yeah. So you see the same system going on up till date. The blames are on both sides. Sides. The European and the African. And the African. You, you understand? Yeah. As a child, when I was growing up, the story my own forefather, my grandfather, my father used to tell me then about who we are on the surface of our I, I realized that we are very, very powerful. Hmm. We can disappear. You can True. tell the ground to open, it will open. How That's come, Africans, right? Africa, yes. Yeah. How comes the European comes around and, and force, our, our, force our, us our, to yeah, do what we didn't want to do, yeah? Later, as I going, I now realize that we sold ourselves. ourselves into slavery. They know, they too, they know that we are very, very powerful. They know who we are, you understand? But it seems we don't know who we are. <laughs> we don't know the power that we have. <laughs> We know that we are very powerful. Out of 12 disciples, there will always be a Judas. We are Judas. You understand? Somebody must betray one person, you understand? Slave spirit at to a nation. Well. well. Hmm. Let's say the water. To buttress. Now, who does this well? That's the question. This well was done by the African ships. Hmm. Why do they have to do the well? Good. Now, the movement of Africans mm -hmm. to America, through that, it's known that Middle Persia, they call it Middle Persia. And the name of the slave ship is called cargo ship, which could take like 600, 700. You know, it was the Portuguese that started the trade. Yeah. Most of the slave moved from Africa then, they stood them to Lisbon. Okay. Lisbon is a very big slave market in Portugal then. Yeah. Where everybody get to get their slave. Then later, along with that, the English joined. And hmm. the name of the first slave ship is being a Jesus of Lubeck, or good ship Jesus, hmm. owned by King Henry VIII of England then. But later, Queen Elizabeth rented it out to one of slave party called John Hawkins. And they said taking Africans away as a slave to work for them. And hmm. most of the town in America, even though the White House uh, uh, built on the was built by, by black people. Black people. Now, on the slave ship, we could have like 600, 7, 3, 200. It depends the size of the slave ship. And the crew they were taking the slave away, they are no more than probably 25 to 30 people. They were taking like 600 or 300 slaves away. So most often, why taking it away? If the slaves supported the land, mm -hmm. and it's aggravated them, you understand? Or they have any opportunity, they'll kill all the crew on board. They will not add the sailor to sail down to any available land. 
they will not occupy. The only person they will not kill them is the sailor. They will ask the sailor to sail back to any available. I think that will happen in Guadalupe and some part, most of the Caribbean. Oh, places, okay. Haiti, Bahama, Haiti, all those, all those places, places yeah. 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 So now the African ships came up with idea. What can they do so that the slave will be less aggressive? That's where they have to do the work. Hmm. And once the slave walk in a single file without heavy chain, the stopover will be here. They will give them the water to drink. They want to consume the water. We are told that they will lose their memory. Wow, it will wipe their memory? But it's not for life, for three to four months. It will weaken them. Not really that you wipe, you will be wiped with their memory. Yeah. Why are they taking them as they <laughs> You know they can't. True, they can't do anything. Uh -huh. Wow. So it will weaken them for three to four months. By then, they will have sailed down to Europe or America. They will not regain their, their strength, strength or back. memories back. Wow. So, government call it slave attenuation, so call it memory loss. Well. But ironically, some say the water is still affected. Some say it's not affected. So, if I drink, this, if I drink this water now, I'll, I'll forget my, I'll, I'll forget my memory for the next four, four, four months. Uh, so, four, four months or three, four months. But some say the power is still there. Some say it's still affected. Some say it's not affected. But we don't know how true this is because we never see. A single source, okay. Let me, let me try it. See I'm gonna, although sometimes you see some tourists say they will take it, but when we get here, you know that the water is dirty. Dirty, that's yeah. Like the scurry, yeah, sometimes. yeah. So that's the way. Then after giving them the water, they will now move them to the point of no return. So, but this this well was dug by Africans. Ships, yeah. The ships, yeah. Even in Benin, they also have one too. Okay. Their own in Widai, their own is a tree. Hmm. Like this, we call it tree of memory loss. The women will go around the tree seven times, the men nine times, and we are told that they will lose their, lose memory. their memory. Wow. This is the point of no return that I was telling you guys about. By the time the slaves get here, this is where they board the ships that take them all the way to Europe and all those other countries where they have been sold. The monument that used to be here yeah. is this two straight pool here. This okay, one this one. Yeah. yeah. There used to be an object on top of them. Okay. That the object symbolizes human being. And there's a chain that connects them. We call it Ark. Of the picture, arc of the picture. So when they move, then they pass under the arc of the picture. This is the bottom of the slave ship. Yeah. One slave head here. The, the next one that we follow is on the, the head, the, head, the leg. Yeah, yeah leg head. head yeah. The reason that they don't want the means of communication within them. Oh, you know, that's, yeah, that's why. wow. So another deck, another deck. The state government came up with beautiful idea. I used to call it beautiful idea. Okay. That they should build another monument in conjunction with the arc of the picture, and that's why they have to control this tunnel. Oh, now, when okay. tourists come here, you go in, probably there's going to be some artwork, pictures. Inside, and yeah. You go in as if you are going to Europe or America, then yeah. you come back to Africa. Africa. To oh, so that's how it goes. Tour around. of return. return. Instead of no more point of no return. return. But this project that you are seeing here is getting more than, more than probably getting to 10 years now. 10 years? Limitlessly. So we don't know where they're going to complete it. This. It's very troubling to listen to and see all of the things people have been through and when you get to this place it's not being preserved. This part of Nigeria's history is not being preserved as it should be. The memory lost well that the African chiefs built is also not being preserved. The monument at the point of no return is practically falling apart. It has been under construction for over 10 years. That's a very long time. I believe that history plays a very important role in the development of a country. If you don't know where you're coming from, how do you know where you're going? If you make mistakes and you don't learn from them, how do we know how to move forward into the future? How do we know how to build the future if we're not keeping records of all the things that have happened in the past? I believe that within a couple years, if these places are not being preserved properly, we would have no history. One of the reasons I'm doing this video is to shine a light on the story of the slave trade in Nigeria. Secondly, is to showcase Badagi as one of the most important parts in Nigeria's slave history. I believe Badagi should be preserved not just for ourselves, but also for the people who are coming after us. They also need to know about where they are coming from. They also need to know their history. It was very mind-blowing going back in time to learn about how slave trade was started in Nigeria. That's all I have to share with you. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll definitely see you guys on the next one.